Today we're going to be making an animatronic witch's cauldron with burning coals underneath. Now I've made a super simple, easy to follow step by step video guide to help anyone wanting to make their own witch's cauldron. So join me for the ride. So here's some of the things we're gonna need for a cauldron. We're gonna need our pack of bones. I got these on Amazon. You're gonna need twigs, pieces of bark, little branches. This is gonna go around the cauldron. Small little paint brushes, spray paint. I have black, red, and gray. I like them all in matte color. Of course, we need our great stuff expanding foam. And I have two sets of lights. These are LED orangey lights and these are flame-like effect lights. I'm gonna link them in the bio below. And just some pruners if we need to cut these up. Let's get started. So let's start by applying cardboard or plastic to the surface you're gonna be working on and then putting your cauldron inside of a plastic bag so that the spray foam doesn't stick to it. Next, we're using Great Stuff Expanding Foam for gaps and cracks. We're gonna need three bottles at 20 ounces each bottle. Begin applying the expanding foam like this. We're going to do a base coat first, so we're going to use an entire bottle before we apply anything else on top of it, such as the sticks or the bones or the lights. After you're done with your first bottle, wait about three minutes before applying your accessory pieces. We're just trying to give it texture, so apply your branches wherever you want them to go, and then apply your LED lights. Wrap them around the cauldron, making sure that you stay on top of the foam, because another bottle of foam is going to be sprayed on top of it. Once you're done covering the lights, you can apply your accessory pieces. I'm putting a skull, some more twigs, some bones here and there. Put them in whatever shape you want because all of this is going to be painted. Next, we're going to spray paint everything with a matte black exterior grade spray paint. I also used a bit of red and gray spray paint. Next, we're going to need exterior white paint and exterior gray paint. Get your mini brush, and now it's time to start painting on the details. I'll be mixing gray and white paints together and just painting the top of items, trying to highlight them. As you can see right now, I'm painting a bony hand and I'm just painting the tops, not the sides. I'm just trying to highlight so that it stands out. Mix and match however much white or gray you want. We just want to give it an ashy burnt look. This part was very tedious, but it took me only about 45 minutes to get everything done. Once it dries, this is what your cauldron should look like. As you can see, I've turned on the LED lights on the inside, and everything looks burnt, very ashy, very smoldering. So this is the look you want to go for. So I wanted to talk really quickly about the motor that I'm going to put inside of the cauldron because it's different than the motor that's on the actual witch. That one's a reindeer motor. So this one's called a Monster Pro Pack. It comes with um, the adapter, with this thing that I have no idea what it's called, <laughs> and the motor over here. It doesn't come with this rod. I added this because I need it for the attachment, so ignore this part. 
You have to hook up all these wires together. The instructions in this pack are super, super helpful. It's super easy to just attach these wires there and then attach them right in here. The instructions helped me because I've never worked with this before, but I got it from monsterguts.com. I'm gonna link it below. And this is called a Monster Pro Pack because it comes with everything you're gonna need for the motor inside of the call. So really quickly, this is the motor. It's gonna go like this down. I have this coupling nut right here. You need this piece because this piece is attached to this one over here. This piece doesn't come with the motor. Then you get a threaded rod. Just like so. And you're good. You're also gonna need a, a couple washers, a couple hex nuts, hex nuts, should I say, um, for this apparatus over here. But I'm gonna link all of this so you know which pieces you need. I get them all at Lowe's so that you're ready to go to set up um, what's gonna go inside of the cauldron. Okay, so here I have my cauldron. It is 17 inches in diameter. So we need to order, or at least I needed to order, a 16 inch acrylic piece. So whatever size diameter or cauldron you have, subtract an inch from that. And here I have, this is clear acrylic. It just has this protective film on it. This is 16 inches diameter, which is an inch less than my cauldron, which allows for movement like this. We need to drill two holes on this, one right in the center for the threaded rod and a second one offset about here for the witch's staff. The witch's staff is going to go through the hole into the motor that's down here and the staff is going to turn the entire acrylic disc like this. This one's a quarter inch thick. That's all you need. You don't need to go thicker because acrylic can be expensive. But I'm going to link the Etsy shop that I use. They cut this to any size you need. So if you have a smaller cauldron or a bigger one, they'll get you whatever size you need. And um, you'll need a drill bit for acrylic to start making the hole. So let's get started on that. So you want to measure the exact center of your acrylic disc. Then we're going to use this neat looking drill bit. We only need to go the thickness or a little bit bigger than the rod I showed you earlier. So we're only going to go in just a little bit. Um, but make sure your drill is not on any high powered setting. We want to drill this slow and steady um, so that we don't melt the acrylic while we're drilling. We just want to do a nice steady drill session. Make sure you have a piece of wood underneath it. So once you drill through, it'll go into the wood and not a table or something. Next, we're going to use a two inch bit that I got from Lowe's. This one's rated to work on acrylic. So we just want to make a hole just to offset, like over here. You just want it to be on, it doesn't matter where you do it, as long as it's about that. You know, that looks like it's three inches from the edge. So we can start right there. Make sure you drill on wood. So this is what the two inch hole should look like. Now let's clean this off and remove the protective film that's on the acrylic plate. Okay, so I'm outside because I'm gonna spray paint this. I took off the protective um, tape that was on it. And as you can see, we have one big hole for the staff and one smaller one for the threaded rod. So you can paint either side you want, but when you install it, the painted side, the spray painted side has to go facing the inside of the cauldron. So I'll paint this side and then just flip it over when it's dry and install it like that. And for the color, you want to use fluorescent neon. Got this from Lowe's, but this is definitely the color you want to use. Okay, now we have to assemble the motor inside of the cauldron. What you want is a block of wood. I have two blocks of wood that I nailed together. I just wanted to give it enough height. So this one's gonna go right here in the center. I'm gonna strap it down. You can use um, zip ties. You can use a piece of rope. I wanna securely tighten it down, so I'm, I'm going extreme. Okay, so this is how I strap mine down. I have this strap right here. I put two screws on this side, one screw over here. Just holding it in place. And once you're done with that, then you can start building upwards. We're gonna need 
couple hex bolts, washers, pretty big washers, and a small bolt because at the end we're going to have this um, expanding foam cap attached like that to this guy here and that's where the staff is going to go all around inside. So let's start building that. Now we need a three inch diameter circle. I've made a hole on this half inch of plywood that I had lying around and the expanding foam cap is exactly three inches so we're going to put it over the hole like that and then we cut this out and this is going to go underneath the acrylic piece. Okay, so now we have to start assembling the motor and the accessories. This expanding foam cap is going to be where the actual staff of the witch rests inside the motor, just like this. So then, we have this metal plate that's also going to go attached to the center threaded rod. So we're going to attach the cap to this end right here, over here. Just like so. And on the inside, we're going to put a washer and a hex nut. The sizes for all of these are going to be in the description and in the previous clip as well. There we go. We've tightened it up by hand. Nothing crazy. We've got that. Now we're moving on to our threaded rod. Remember the attachment is already on it. I'm going to use the third option. The only reason why I'm using that is when I measured the swing, this length was the best. And let me show you why real quick. Okay, so the reason we did that there is because if this goes in the center like this, the cup falls right within the hole, just like that. So before I cut this, I actually didn't measure it. So by chance, it worked out. So just make sure you do. It'll make it easier if you just measure so that you know where it's supposed to fall. And it'll fall like that. It'll actually be like this, but you get the point. We're gonna need one up here. And right there. This part right over here on the top will be for the wood that goes just like that to hold the acrylic plate. And on the bottom, this piece over here is going to go in here. So we need a bolt on the top of it, like so. And then a washer and bolt, or should I say nut, we need a nut on the bottom and nut on the top. Just like so. There we go. And then you tighten that one up. And with these, we'll tie up with um, some pliers. But then on the top, it would go this one over here, just like that. We'll put it a little bit lower. And then we can grab the acrylic plate like that, and a washer and a nut, and right here on the top, this will be hidden with a skull, so you won't have to worry about that being seen, because it's going to be hidden. So now, moment of truth, let's see if it spins, and we have spin, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now we've put our entire motor and attachment on the inside. As you can see, our cable is running on the side, and then we put a light bulb inside of there. It's actually a floodlight. I'm going to switch it out to a regular bulb, but I just wanted to see what it would look like when it's lit. You can see the wires hanging on the side. So now on the sides, on the rim of this cauldron, I'm going to apply spray foam. 
Use door and window expanding foam for this versus the big gap one because we don't want the foam to expand too much. This is what it should look like after I've spray painted it with neon green. Next, I ordered a bag of fillable Christmas balls in different sizes. These are going to be our bubbles. Cut off the ends right there and let's get to spray painting. So now for the finishing pieces. I have these Christmas balls that are acrylic and I just opened them, spray painted the inside of them. I have three different sizes. These are gonna be our bubbles. Spray paint the inside very lightly, let them dry, and then you can set them up like this in whatever pattern you want. I have these skulls. These are 3D printed skulls that I found from an Etsy shop online. I'm gonna link them in the description below. It almost gives a submerged look to it, which is exactly what I was going for. So the bigger skull I'm gonna put in the center. I've drilled a hole in there so that the threaded rod can go through it and it'll rest just like this. And this skull I'll probably leave right over here. I've cut, this bone used to be full like this. It's a plastic bone, I've cut it in half and I'll probably just use this side and glue it like that so that it's sticking up halfway from the brew. I'm going to use hot my hot glue gun right now and I'm gonna put hot glue all along the edges and then place it like that. Then, in order to hide the hot glue, I'm going to use some of the spray paint in a little cup. I'm gonna use a small paintbrush and I'm just gonna paint the edges so it looks like it's partially submerged in there. Now, I'm not gonna glue all of them right now because this one over here may hit the sides. So you wanna make sure that anything closer to the edge gets glued on once you've installed it inside of the cauldron, including this one because the threaded rod has to go through here. But just so you know how we're gonna do it, we also have some eyeballs that I'm gonna put in here like that. Um, and that's how you get the small finishing pieces to your witch's brew going. So once you have your acrylic disc on the inside, remember to get your extra large washer, your hex nut, put those in there, and then start tightening it up. If you don't tighten this up, the acrylic disc is going to be wobbly like this. There you go. We're gonna get our, our skull, our 3D printed skull with the hole that I've made. And this goes right like so. And then of course, our bubble, bubble pieces. And just like that. And once you turn on the motor, this is how it should be. So now all I gotta do is glue down the pieces and do a little bit of painting with my mini brush and we'll be done with this.